In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Thomas Aquinas says, the love of God is unitive, unitive. It unites us, since it leads man's affections from the many to the one. It's the work of God to heal, to mend, and unite a broken world. His love brings us back together when we're disintegrated, confused in ourselves because of sin, when our relationships with others are fractured, even when body and soul are separated in death. That which is thrown apart by sin, death and the devil, our God of love restores and unites in Christ. The work of God, which we call salvation, is to bring about unity and communion and wholeness, what we call holiness. And communion is the great theme today, with its twin celebrations of all saints and all souls. These feasts are about how the love of God unites us in ourselves, unites us with one another, unites us after death, making us whole again, making us truly ourselves. For as Augustine says, you've made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. So when we sin, we experience disintegration. We're pulled apart by guilt, by contrary desires. We long for the good, that is for God, but we settle for less than that. We settle for so much less than the good. And that's really what sin means, settling for less. We choose something that lacks goodness, truth and beauty. Hence God comes to befriend us, to give us a taste of his goodness. That's what the psalmist says. We can say this of the Eucharist most of all. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Those who respond, those who choose to feed on God's goodness and truth and become friends of God as we're all called to do, they undergo a transformation of their desires. St. Thomas Aquinas calls this the union of affection. For just as friends share common interests and loves, so the grace of divine love, charity, is given to us to teach us to love what God loves. To be precise, it's the Holy Spirit who is given to us firstly in baptism and then more intensely again in confirmation who does this. It is God's love who unites us in ourselves for the Holy Spirit fills us with charity so that we can be more united to God in love to grow to maturity in Christ. And we're being drawn up to the heights. It's one of the great Italian saints, a saint who died so young, I think at 24, Pier Giorgio Frassati said, verso l'altro, to the heights, to the heights. That was his motto. That is, because he, he was a rock climber, he said, Verso l'altro, up to God the Most High, closer to God the Most High. This is our desire, this is our goal, our end. This is what we celebrated this morning, All Saints Day. We're being drawn up to the heights. This great unifying movement of love is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's he who produces saints by drawing us up to the heights and it's he who unites us among ourselves by drawing us each closer to God, uniting us in the love of God. So St. Augustine spoke about humanity's movement to God like this. Our hearts are restless until they, God, O oh Lord, they rest in you. His own experience of conversion to faith shows how often we settle for lesser goods, finding temporary rest in half-truths and people other than God but these never fully satisfy us. And so we have to move on up to the heights, closer to God who comes to find us, who is waiting for us, who says to us, each one of us, come to me, who speaks to our hearts, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Christ wants to give us rest because he wants, to, so he wants to give us himself. He wants us to rest in his love, and it is his Holy Spirit who works in us, pulling us towards divine love, moving us closer to Christ. 
This is why we say that the Holy Spirit animates the church for the life of the pilgrim church on earth is one movement towards God, uniting the many to the one. Here we are then, gathered from our different places, different origins, different families, into the one body of Christ, united here in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Through the sacraments of baptism, confirmation and Holy Communion, God fills us up with his charity in his own divine life and so draws us close to himself and to each other. In Holy Communion, though we are many, we are one body because we all share one bread. And this fellowship of love in Christ's body explains the service of all souls. The communion of saints goes beyond this earthly life, beyond death even, endures forever. The union among us goes beyond and continues in the next life. It is a spiritual communion born in baptism. And it isn't broken in death. But thanks to the risen Christ, it's destined to find its fullness beyond death, in eternal life. There is a deep, indissoluble bond between those who belong to the church militant, those who are still pilgrims in this world, us, and those who've crossed the threshold of death and entered eternity, those whom we love but see no longer. All baptised persons here on earth and those beyond death make one great family together. We are together in Holy Communion. This Holy Communion between earth and heaven is realized in our prayers, in the Eucharist and in our prayers, in our intercessory prayers. So we pray for the dead. We pray for those whom we love but see no longer. As Bishop, Bishop Michael Ramsey wrote, Within the liturgy, the saints pray for one another and ask for each other's prayers. And the saints include the glorious ones who reflect the glory of Christ and those who are far from perfect, whether they are beyond death or struggling sinners on earth. All pray for all. All pray for all. That's what we participate in and take part in in this service as we pray for the faithful departed, and as we believe that they still pray for us because they love us, just as we pray for them because we love them. May the ardour of our love for them, our one unifying love for God and for them, help our beloved brothers and sisters that they may at last rest in Christ. Eternal rest. Grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.